Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman. Did you know that you can create, expose, and govern MCP servers in a way that empowers developers while keeping enterprise-grade control and safe integration? I'm going to learn how it works today on Azure Friday. Hey, I'm Scott, and it's Azure Friday. I'm here with Anish Talaparetti. How are you, sir? I'm good, Scott. How are you? I am very well and always on Azure Friday, excited to learn new things. You know, AI has taken over, MCP servers are at the heart of it. And it sounds like Azure API management is ready to meet the challenge. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like customers have been nonstop asking us about how can they use API management for uh, to use for their MCP and AI based workloads and API management is there for the challenge. So it seems like MCP servers should be thought of as another API, like REST is out there. We manage it with Azure API management. This is a natural and normal thing for API management to do, is to manage and govern these, these APIs in the form of MCP servers. That's correct. Yeah, MCP servers at the core are APIs with some additional metadata to make it e easier for agents and LLMs to understand what these tools are all about. And that is where uh, API management is a perfect fit to handle MCP servers, just like how we do APIs. Okay, so what does this architecture look like? Uh, so let's 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 quickly talk about the first. Uh, I wanted to share my screen to just give an mm -hmm. overview of what API management and what AI gateway within API management is, and then I'll mm -hmm. quickly jump into the architecture. Fantastic. All right. So API management is primarily known for mediating and being the bridge to manage APIs while building systems. And MCP is the new context open source protocol that has been in the market for the last one year and has seen rapid adoption. And, and what MCP does is enables agents and LLMs and AI applications to access tools and resources in a way they can understand better and in a way they expect. Uh, so what we have done with an API management is we have bundled all these capabilities to support various AI workflows, and we are dubbing them as AI Gateway. So what does AI Gateway? It is your bridge to mediate all kinds of AI usage, be it you're talking to models, be it you're talking to tools, be it you're talking to resources and data, and be it your communication and collaboration with other agents. API management and AI gateway is there to mediate that usage, ensure we can manage the traffic, ensure there is security, ensure there is governance and observability that API management is already known for, but now we are bringing that to this AI space. Uh, in terms of architecture, I'm just primarily going to focus on what MCP is all about and what we are doing in API management. Sounds good. So as you can see, uh, if, if AI gateway with an API management does exactly the same things what we have done for APIs, right? Support transformations, enable safety and security policies, enable traffic shaping and management policies, and finally give you the observability, all of this out of the box. So a lot of agents are trying to talk to various tools and resources, but there is no good way to mediate that usage. A lot of customers are like, how can I ensure the access to my MCP server is secure? How do I ensure uh, I'm able to get observability of who is accessing my MCP server and how many times they are invoking it? Is there something funny going on? How do I ensure I'm not sharing anything uh, sensitive to the AI agent? So we want to make sure we protect the MCP endpoints that customers are creating, and that's where API management comes in. What does API management and AI gateway do for MCP servers. We help customers through the entire life cycle. We help customers build MCP servers. Uh, you can build it through APIs that you are seeing on the left side. You can proxy already built, pre-built external MCP servers. They could be built on Azure first party MCP servers like container apps functions. They could even be built outside Azure. It could be a Stripe MCP server, Box, Atlassian, Whatever it is, you can bring all these MCP tool endpoints into your workflows and manage, mediate, and govern them using AI Gateway. 
what do you get out of this? You get strong protection, observability, and control exactly to meet the standards that your enterprise and organization requires. Okay, that makes sense. So I can visualize this and that architecture, I can fit it in my head. What does that look like from a coding perspective? How do I interact with this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So let me just uh, give you an idea of how it works, right? So mm -hmm. I'm just going to give you an overview of how MCP servers are currently integrated into the overall API management system. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, the first part of the life cycle is create. The second part is secure. The third part is observe or gov govern. Fourth part is observe. Fifth part is enable discovery. So we'll cover each of these things through this uh, live demo of how things happen in this uh, on uh, Azure API management. So uh, historically, we have had APIs, right? So right, yep. you can uh, use import a REST API, you can upload an open API spec, or you can even bring uh, any Azure resource, import it as an API into API management. You can exactly do the same thing for MCP servers too. You can bring any API in API management and convert it into an MCP server in a matter of a few clicks. Really? You, yes. So uh, as you can see, I'm just going into the MCP servers tab on API management. I'm clicking expose an API as MCP server. You choose the API that's imported in your API management and service instance. Once you choose a particular API, you get to see what operations are involved in that API. You can choose and you oh, can wow. give it a name and a description. And so it takes you, care of the transformation, get a exactly. post, whatever. Suddenly, yeah. any API, regardless of where it came from, could I even take a, a, a legacy SOAP API and make it tools and make it an MCP server? Uh, today, we don't support uh, anything outside of REST, but we mm -hmm. are we have things on the roadmap for next year to support gRPC, GraphQL, oh, wow. areas where there is some demand. That's going to be very powerful. Yeah. Uh, so like I said, uh, it's like I just created a simple import from Logic Apps that was already imported into my API management instance, and yep. I quickly converted it into an MCP server. Now I have an MCP server endpoint. And I can go into this particular server and configure all the policies I want to do within this in terms mm -hmm. of throttling, inbound, outbound. And that gives me a lot of control in terms of how I manage this. Very cool. Uh, the other big aspect a lot of customers ask us is, hey, I have an MCP server, but how do I secure access to this MCP server? I'm really worried about that. And I don't want to deal with all the complexity that comes with security. Guess what? API management gives it out of the box. You can secure access to your MCP servers inbound, uh, basically from the client to the MCP server. Or if you have API management as an intermediary, API management acts as a pass through to secure access. Or it can even register an identity provider that you choose, extract the token from that identity provider, and pass it to the backend to validate and access. So I can show you a simple example here. So we have a Microsoft Graph MCP. Here I have the, set up just two simple policies. One is to validate, because I have a client, I have an API management server, which is acting as a proxy. Then I have a backend server, which is hosted in app service here. All that I'm doing is validating access to my API management server, step one. And if that access is valid, then I'm extracting the token based on the credentials provided and move to the backend. And pass that token to the backend so that the customer gets access to this graph MCP server that I have hosted in app service. So we can do a quick demo. I have already set up my VS code here and I have a small JSON, right? I have already onboarded the MCP servers in VS code, as you can see, right? You can add a new MCP mm -hmm. server. I have two servers. I have created a no auth instance where I'm directly exposing the endpoint of app service. Uh, the server that I'm hosting. Right. The other server is the APIM URL, right? Which is being fronted by APIM. So let's quickly see how that works. So I'm just gonna call, say, invoke the no auth server to see what happens. So you're invo interesting. You're invoking it from GitHub. Yeah. And it, you're telling it, go call that tool by using the hashtag to indicate this is an MCP server and I wanna call it. And now it's yeah. asking permission to make that call. Correct. Yeah. In agent mode, you can do that, right? So, yeah. Yep. 
there it's running it and it worked because it's got no auth yes oh hang on was that the auth version or the no auth version no it's this is the no auth version and it says there's an authorization issue yep. because it. i didn't have the right credentials i can't access right. that server. right right yeah. and it actually gave you a very good explanation of what went wrong yes exactly now That's let's tr try to see what happens with auth mm -hmm. So it's oh. asking me again for permission to access. I'm doing it. And my, my auth uh, is already registered for the sake of time. So I have already registered it. Sure. As you can see, this is a graph server and it has pulled my information, right? It's like wow. I've just run a simple show user profile information. So my name, my ID, and a few other things are pulled from that graph server. Very cool. And this is the kind of thing where if you're making an, an API or a, an MCP server, the promise of API management was, I don't want to worry about that stuff. That's not yeah. the point of my tool. Authentication is a sec secondary concern. It is orthogonal to my business work. So API management simply taking care of that solves a huge problem for not just this API, but all the APIs and all the MCP servers that I might have in my business. Exactly. Exactly. It's not just the APIs within API management. You can proxy any external MCP server, like I mentioned. Uh, you can create an identity provider. We support all kinds of identity providers here. You can choose any identity provider you like and set it up. And uh, API management takes care of everything and enables access to that without the developer having to deal with any kind of credentials at all. That's cool. So uh, this is the secure part of the overall story. Then, like I said, governance, uh, we have the ability to write any kinds of policies, right? We can add a throttling policy. We can add a transformation policy. I'm not going to take time to showcase that, but uh, we can add all those kinds of policies within my, uh, in the, in my policy tab to ensure that my system is not getting abused with too many requests. My mm -hmm. system is being secure. I'm getting doing the right kind of transformations for my own workloads. And you can also do content safety checks because we also have integration to content safety. You can do checks around, hey, am I passing any sensitive information? Can I stop that? So there are various policies within API management that you can use to uh, ensure you are meeting your goals for your workflows. And it's really important to note that the, the power of API management, and people don't realize this, is this is layer seven, right? Like this yes. is not thinking about HTTP unless you want to. This is solving problems that is that are specific problems for APIs, specific problems for MCP. And they, this is completely governed separately from your APIs. But yeah. the APIs, they never know. They just work. The yeah. customers, they never know. It just works. It's such a nice, clean separation to have a layer seven intelligent management service sitting between you and a whole host of APIs, like you said, not just yeah. REST. Right. And uh, you, you, all these things, can, as in under the MCP protocol, uh, are enabled readily for, as you have seen, in a matter of few clicks for AI workflows. So let's also talk about the next step of the user journey that I was mentioning, right? Mm -hmm. APIM also comes with robust analytics, right? Yeah. So you are able to understand which tools are getting invoked in your MCP server, who is invoking them. Uh, the, some of these features are currently in preview. They are going to be launched soon by end of this month. But the idea here is to get robust observability for customers to understand what is happening with the MCP servers that they are mediating with API management. Yep. Uh, in, in terms of which clients are accessing, what auth are they using, and it becomes very easy to debug in case there are any of issues. Yeah. All the stuff you would expect from any really well-run managed Azure service. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, lastly, I just wanted to talk about you have built your application uh, and you are you have built your own MCP server. Now you want to expose this MCP server to other developers within your organization or even externally so that they can use that MCP server as part of their workflows. Mm -hmm. So we have something called API Center. API Center uh, within uh, Azure API Management is the catalog and registry of uh, aggregating all the MCP servers and APIs that you have, package it as a nice private registry, and showcase it to your end customers. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm just showing you a quick example here. I'm not going to do a quick demo. 
but all you need to do is go to discovery in uh, your API center instance within API management. You can register an existing thing or you can create your own API center. And a quick example of how this works would be uh, the MCP center demo that we have created recently mm -hmm. uh, that you can see here. These are all mostly public MCP servers that we have registered, but you can register your own pr private MCP servers as well using the MCP uh, URL endpoint. You can have local remote. You can have Microsoft based or partner. You can have public mm -hmm. private, and you can also drive categorization. So this drives a lot of ability for customers to discover the right kind of tools for their agentic workflows. And once they have discovered it, they can add it to their own private catalog so that it's visible and easy to consume for everyone within their organization. Yeah, it's really worth noting just that if you, small business or large business, if you've got a bunch of APIs and you're starting to think about how I can make this agentic and make it so I can go and chat these APIs, you could do this in a, you could prototype this in a day or two, like maybe even a couple of hours, not to push it, but you could create an internal private MCP marketplace for your enterprise and people could start putting together agents very, very quickly. If you've, yes. if you've got well-defined APIs, the world is your oyster. You can have a playground of MCP servers. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. This is fantastic. So how do I, do I have this now? Is this in preview? How do I do yes. this? after? Call? So right now, uh, all the MCP capabilities within API management and API center are in preview. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm sorry. That's okay. Where can uh, I go to learn more? Let's find out. Yeah. So let me just give you where we are and then I'll talk about where you can go and find these things. Please. So uh, we, the, we are about what four and a half months old in the market since we launched. So, and at build uh, in May, 2025, we launched the initial set of features in terms of exposing the APIs as MCP servers with auth and the registry. And since then we have been hard at work to expand capabilities, ability to bring in third party MCP servers, expand uh, capabilities to access these MCP capabilities around API and SKUs and hardening this product so that it's ready for pro your production workloads. So we have we done most of those things. Currently, we are in the last stages of enabling observability, like I talked about. We are also, a lot of customers have asked us for versioning because mm -hmm. versioning is quite popular with APIs. They want to do something similar to run A-B tests, to have a different version for testing and another version for production. So there are various use cases. So we are enabling that. And also we are enabling stronger governance by assignment to APIM products. Products are nothing but containers of a group of APIs or MCP servers for which you can set a specialized set of rules, right? To see who can yep. access it, what they can do in that. So we are enabling all of these things and we expect to go GA by end of October. Nice. Uh, and yeah, so you could, all of these capabilities should be available. Uh, by going to our Azure portal and uh, you can see MCP servers as preview. You can check out our documentation on uh, Azure Learn to see uh, how to configure these MCP servers and how to get value out of them for your work workloads. And we also have shared a link for some labs that we have created to make it easy for you to onboard. So please do take a look at that. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate you spending so much time with us today. Yeah, thank you, Scott. All right, I am learning how to expose APIs as MCP servers with ease and with power using Azure API management today on Azure Friday.